perfect. Cool. So thanks everyone, as always, for tuning in. Today I'm gonna to keep it a little bit shorter, and by shorter, I mean shorter compared to the normal like hour and a half to two hour long streams I normally do, uh, because I have to go get dinner with uh, my girlfriend and her parents in about an hour. So um, be before I do all that, I wanted to talk to you guys and have a cool stream talking about uh, the learning mentality in fighting games. So today's show is gonna be about developing a learning mentality, and I'll walk through that concept real quick. But before I do, uh, I wanted to give a brief shout out to uh, the fighting game community over at NeoGAF and Cindy Mayweather in particular. Uh, Cindy made this great post, uh, basically collecting people who wanted to talk about improving. And so there's, there's a few fighting game threads on NeoGAF I think. Uh, I've checked out a couple. Um, I go there. I, I check it out maybe once a day, but I don't really post that much. But I saw this post. Uh, someone on Twitter pointed it out to me, but it is a post devoted to improving. And so the tone of the conversation is not like talking about FGC drama or talking about releases or anything like that. It's people posting about the games they're playing and they're just trying to get better. So they're trying to find people who who uh, who I, like they can learn from or practice with, right? Like you want to find people as around the same level as like a consistent sparring partner. You want to find people who are better than you and kind of uh, get get tutelage and guidance from them. And um, it's just a really cool thread. And honestly, it's the kind of thing that like out of all of fighting games, I don't see I don't see a whole lot on the internet devoted to that specific kind of improvement. And it's great. And people um, people from all over the fighting game community are posting in there just kind of, and, and, and they're not pros, they're just people who are trying to learn and trying to teach a little bit in whatever game they like. So they got x players, they got Smash players, they got Street Fighter players, all kinds of people are in there. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and post the link in chat real quick. If you want to check it out yourself, it's really cool. Um, they, uh, um, they do, uh, Cindy did quote my book in the intro post, which I thought was, was uh, appreciated. But it's, it's a cool thread and it's the kind of attitude that I want to see more people taking towards fighting games because that's really what I personally got out of fighting games, right? Like, I don't have any great tournament highlights. When Usually whenever you can find footage of me playing in tournament, it's me choking horribly and losing. Um, but what I what I got from fighting games was this really uh, really fantastic just attitude towards developing skills, and it's it's helped me level up other parts of my life too. Um, oh, so uh, if you're if you're watching this video after the fact and on on YouTube or whatever, then I'll I'll, I'll go ahead and post this link in the, the video description. So just check it out. It's a really cool thread. But basically, um, what I mean when I'm talking about the learning mentality is. Normally, in when you when you give someone a fighting game, let's say let's say uh, you give just your your average kind of like gamer person, you give them a copy of Street Fighter, the, they might mess around in training mode, they might like pick some characters, like like play around with that. Maybe they do some of the trials. They probably just go into single player. Eventually, the, they'll they'll give multiplayer a shot, whether they play online or against other people. And like after about like a week, people often churn out, right? So like we know that Street Fighter and any fighting game, like League of Mortal Kombat, right? Mortal Kombat. 10 has won all kinds of awards. I think it's one of the best-selling games, if not the best-selling game of 2015. Um, so we know that lots of people buy these games, but not a lot of people end up playing them the way that you and I play them, right? And like, if you're tuning into the stream, I assume you're a pretty kind of hardcore fighting game player. You might not be the best on your block or whatever, but you're hardcore enough to pay attention to stuff on the internet about fighting games, right? So you, you kind of, you care about this stuff, right? But for most people, they don't do that, you know? So that's why uh, Evo can have, you know, uh, like I think a couple thousand people enter Street Fighter 4 and that's you know the, 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 that and when you compare that to the percentage of people who bought Street Fighter 4 it's very 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 small right and of course there are all kinds of barriers you have to get to Evo yeah you, you know you probably want to own a stick or all, all kinds of stuff like that but like fundamentally a lot of people try fighting games and then churn out super fast because they're not having fun so what is it about us, right? People like you and me, um, or at least people like me, like weirdos who kind of stuck around in fighting games for a long time, right? What is it that that, that we got get out of fighting games that they didn't get in that, that that they didn't get out of it, right? Um, what causes like the first time I played Street Fighter in front of people, it was uh, you know other than like you know playing on on SNES and arcades and Street Fighter Two back in the day, but like when I was when I was a teenager, I was like fifteen and I played CVS One for the first time, and I hadn't touched a fighting game in like years at this point, but I played CVS One in a random pizza place in Berkeley and I, I like I won my first you know round like I beat I beat their first character and I was like I felt really good and then I and then I lost and that felt less good but I was like oh man I can't lose again right I, I quartered up and I kept on going back but for a lot of people that, that like that that reaction is, and that those feelings was not normal right that feel stressed or that feel embarrassed or whatever and that stopped playing and uh, that so that that 
that kind of reaction to me was a mystery for a long time. I didn't get it, right? I didn't get why I had so much fun playing fighting games, like win or lose, and other people didn't. And the more that I've learned about video games and why I play them and why other people play them, um, the more I've kind of learned that people have fun in different ways, right? So we, we use the verb, when you talk about interacting with video games, we use the verb to play. But uh, play has many different meanings, and there are many different kinds of things that we all get when, we, when we're playing with anything, right? So like, the way that I would play with an action figure is kind of different than the way that I would play with a Lego, right? Like when you think of Legos, I'm building something out of, out of basically nothing, right? Like I could be assembling a, a kit, right? Or I could just be making my own stuff. And the enjoyment that I get out of that is kind of different than if I'm playing with like X-Men characters or Marvel, you know, whatever, because uh, with, with action figures, it's, you know, or dolls or whatever, those characters already exist and the play is telling the story, right? So those are two different kinds of play. And when I was, when I was editing Game Developer Magazine, I worked with this really talented designer, I think he's still at Ubisoft, his name is Jason Vandenberg, and he does a lot of thinking about the psychology of play. So he wrote this article, and he's given talks about this, you can search for online, they're really great. But I'll go ahead and link the article in chat, um, or if you're not in chat because you're watching this afterwards, I'll put it in the YouTube VOD. But he basically talks about the psychological motivations behind why people play. And... Fundamentally, what he gets at is that play kind of means different things to each of us, right? So for me personally, I play because I want the satisfaction of getting better, right? Um, and part of that is connected to this phrase power fantasy. Uh, let's see, there we go. Power fantasy. Um, that, that, you know, like I want, I want to play video games because it's, it's a venue for me to feel powerful, right? And that's a pretty common motivator. When you look at a lot of games out there, they kind of cater to uh, that, you know, different, different aspects of, of what we'd consider a power fantasy. However... Um, I'm, I'm into, I need satisfying challenges, right? So I've been playing games since I was like three years old, right? And I was watching my dad play games before that. And, and by and large, I'm not interested in the kind of challenges that, that like single player experiences offer. So I need, I need a challenge that means uh, I need to play against other people. I want, I want the growth that I experience in a video game to be in, in here, right? In my brain and in my hands and not, not my character, right? So like, I, you can satisfy a power fantasy by playing a role-playing game and leveling up and getting better stats and new weapons. But to me, all that says is, oh, I put time in this. I didn't get better at this game, necessarily. Um, the reason why my numbers are going up is because I acquired this item in-game, right? What I really need is, like, I want to start from scratch every time, and, and the, only carry, the only thing that I carry over is my brain, right? So that's, that's the specific kind of desire that I satisfy when I'm playing a game. Um, and the, the reason for that is probably, it's a long story, but the, the short version is probably because when I was growing up as a kid, I was a huge nerd and I didn't have that many friends in school, but one of the few things that I did, uh, that, that I was kind of known for was being good at video games. So like, if you, if you were having a sleepover, you'd invite me, not because you wanted to me to hang out a whole bunch, right? Like I was, I was a weird kid. Um, you'd probably invite me because at some point the game that you rented that night, you'd get stuck. Right, and everyone gets super frustrated. At it. So you bring me along to beat it. Right, I remember when my when my buddy rented Mega Man X, and I was the only person who could win any of the boss fights. Right, and so the, the, this became this this mechanic, where, or this like social dynamic, where like um, everyone would be cheering me on. It's like, oh, this is awesome. Like the thing that these people care about is me being good at video games. Like that was super validating. Right, um, and so. Uh, that's kind of an attitude that stuck with me long, you know, long after I kind of learned how to talk to people um, and, and whatever. But uh, so because of that, like my brain was wired at a pretty formative age to care and to get satisfaction out of out of being good at things. Right. Um, and specifically this kind of like competitive skill development mentality. And from what I can tell, when people interact with video games, we're, just, we're talking like, you know, the millions and millions of people who play video games all across the world, whether it's like mobile games or social games or, you know, MMOs or whatever, uh, that attitude is pretty rare, right? Like, um, because, especially because when you're playing against other people and you're just starting out, uh, you're going to get your ass kicked a whole lot in like any multiplayer game ever, right? And that's an experience that not many people uh, are into when, when they play video games, right? So um, this is what I mean when I talk about a learning mentality towards playing video games. It's it's fundamentally, it's the understanding that the satisfaction that I get in, in a video game is not necessarily just from winning. It's also about feeling, feeling my effort turn into results, right? Turn into improvement. And some of that is measured by winning, but some of that is measured by other things too, right? Like, um, the, and, and I'll go into this a little bit deeper, but like, I, 
if I play, I've, I've lost to boss in CVS2 multiple times over the past couple of years, right? Yep, it's an old man game. I didn't even get, I never even got a chance to play him until relatively recently, um, you know, like in, in the last couple of years. But I've lost to him quite a few times now. And each time, like, I get a little bit better, right? The, so when I played him at Evo, I was actually able to take, like, I was able to get to his last character, right? So I think I wiped out his bison or whatever. Um, but, like, that's, that's better than I've ever done against him. And, yeah, I lost. I got blown up. But I was happy because I saw that improvement. Right, but most people, when they first get into fighting games, it's oh, I'm I'm not winning. Wow, I'm actually losing a lot. Wow, there's a lot of work that goes into this. This feels shitty, right? And so um, that's that's kind of what we're talking about. Is like uh, if you're playing a, a a video game because you want to explore, or because you're interested in in really cool characters, or you or you want that that power fantasy, right? That that satisfaction of 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 winning and leveling up and getting better. Uh, you can get all of that in fighting games to different degrees, right? Like, um, you, 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 you know, people who, ex who love exploring stuff and exploring systems, fighting games give you a really rich canvas to work with, and you see that in combo videos and tech demonstrations and all kinds of exploits, right? Desk is really cool for that, and Maj, too, and all the combo video dudes out there, right? Um, uh, if you saw that my, my interview with AVB yesterday, like there's a lot of fascinating stuff that just goes into designing a, a character and seeing how they how they express themselves and how how they how their kind of personality and meaning is connected to the people who play them, right? Um, there, there's so much like fascinating insight that, that you can glean from fighting games in that without even having to ever win a match, right? Um, but like fundamentally. Uh, the, the core of a competitive fighting game is beating other people, and if you want to see progress there, right, then you have to take, well, I, I guess the, the best way to put it is, if you want to get satisfaction out of fighting games, all right, and we got a ban. Well, that's cool. Um, fun, fundamentally, uh, if you want the satisfaction of, of uh, succeeding at a fighting game, you have to get used to taking your lumps. And part of that is you, you have to have this attitude that's not, I'm going to sit down in front of my couch and zone out and play something that's fundamentally kind of uh, just like, you know, like deliberately rewarding, right? That's how I describe most single player games. Like, yeah, they're hard games and they're easy games, but fundamentally they're designed so you go through and you have a rewarding experience. And fighting games don't give you that, right? You have to earn that. Um, the analogy that I would put is actually, it's, it's not, it's not like, like some video games are like basically an interactive movie, right? You're going for the story or to have a good time or whatever, but some games are like, uh, they're like lifting weights, right? Or training or any kind of like physical discipline. I think music and learning an instrument is kind of similar, right? Um, where basically like when, you, when you're lifting, right? And you, and you're new at the gym, you don't really know what you're doing or whatever. You're going to get your ass kicked, Right. But that's part of it, and that's actually part of the satisfaction, is that afterwards, right, after you're done and you're sore, you feel a little good about getting your ass kicked, right? And, you, and as you start, as you continue going, as you turn weightlifting into a habit or working out or whatever, you get to, like, you're, you should always be getting your ass kicked, right? Like, if you're not getting your ass kicked, then you're not getting stronger, and you're not getting better at what it is you do, but you can be, you can start to feel good from the incremental progress you've made, right? So, like, Every time you go to the gym, you should feel sore at the end. You should feel tired, right? Because you, because that's how you know you put in work. And then you start to notice the results. And the results aren't like, oh, the, you know, the bench press got a lot easier. Because if you're benching and it gets easier, then you put on more weight. And you make it harder. You don't want it to be easy. But you notice the results in terms of how you look or how you feel, right? You stand up in the morning and you're a little sore from squatting, but you realize that you can probably, you can like move weight around a little bit better. And that's really cool, right? Um, so too it is with Street Fighter, except that since it's competitive, right, we tend to focus a lot on the, on the moments of victory, right, and not how you got there and how you, how, like, the, the kind of incremental improvements it took for you to get there, right? So, and, and that is kind of, to me, that's, that's, that's the beauty of, of fighting games. That's why fighting games have held my attention long after, like, most, you know, I don't, I barely play any single player games these days. I pretty much only play competitive games, and of that, it's 90% fighting games. And it's because uh, I find they're not predictable, right? They're not as unambiguously satisfying or entertaining as a good single player video game. And that's what I love about it. Like, when I win, I had to earn that W. I had to take it from somebody else who wanted it probably just as bad as I did, right? Um, the game isn't designed to entertain me. It's just, it's, it, it's, it gives me a space in which I'm supposed to find the fun and entertain myself. And that, I think that's, that stuff is really cool, right? But the hard part is finding that progress, right? So like I said, in the gym, you have all these cues for, 
uh, telling you, hey, you're getting stronger, hey, you're getting better, and you notice that in your real life too, right? But in, in fighting games, it's a little bit hard. And it's harder if you're getting into it now and you mostly play against online people because you don't necessarily see that progress when you're playing against online randos, right? Like, uh, you, will, you will actually get better from playing people on the internet, but you don't always have consistent opposition, right? You're not playing against the same people over the course of weeks or months, so it's harder for you to know, oh, am I improving in this regard, right? Like. Um, when I first started playing fighting games, I used to play mostly against my close friends, and we were all super into it, and that was great. Um, and so I got to chart my progress against them, right? And I could see when we're both getting better, and so our wins and losses stay roughly the same. I can see when one dude just finds this breakthrough, like he finds something that really clicks with him, and, and just like takes off on a tear and is whooping all our asses, and that motivates us, right? Like if in, if in one week I go 5-5 five, five against you and the next week you beat me 9-1, then that definitely motivates me to try and figure out whatever it is you're doing and stop it. But without that consistency, it's not nearly as easy, right? It's not as easy to, uh, it's not as easy to chart your progress and to feel it um, if I'm just playing against different people every time, right? And it's not as satisfying either. So um, if, we, if we track only it, like if, if we and so I guess to, to to back up a little bit if if I tie my satisfaction to a fighting game to just my wins and losses it's also kind of misleading right and I alluded to this a little bit earlier but um, I a, a win or loss is a pretty binary state right like I can pay attention to how much I lost right maybe it's a close match maybe it was a blowout um, but fundamentally it was it was uh, there, there's a lot of work that I have to do before I beat boss. That doesn't mean I'm not getting better in the process, but it means I have a lot of fucking work to do. And if the only way that I can feel motivated is to finally beat him, then there's going to be, I'm, I'm probably never going to get there, right? Even, even if I, if I scale it down, so it's not like beat the all time great, right? It's just beat some guy who's really, really good. Um, still win or, winning or losing is a binary state and there's a certain kind of any given Sunday factor, right? So like if, you know, if he beat me now, then he's the better player now, right? That doesn't tell me a whole lot about how I progress, right? So one thing that I've, I've been kind of trying to do as I, as I figure out how to, con how to like continue to enjoy fighting games and, and find different ways of fighting games, um, different ways to enjoy fighting games as an adult is to try and find different areas of, um, satisfaction. Right, different ways to 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 feel like I'm getting that progress and to see my progress and to really understand who I am as a fighting game player. Um, if you've seen any of my earlier videos about like uh, kind of the 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 reasons that I really love fighting games and, and fighting games is this canvas for skill development, um, you'll know that the way I think of these things fundamentally is they're tools to improve my brain. Right, and a, a key part of that that framing is that. Uh, improvement happens regardless of whether I'm winning or losing, right? So winning is one validation that what I'm doing is working and that I'm getting better, but it's not the only one. And I think the best way I can explain this is actually with, uh, a, it's, it's something that my good friend Diego told me um, when I was preparing for my first Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournament. So I've been doing mixed martial arts and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for about like 11 years now or so, maybe 12 at this point. Yeah, because it's 2016. And, um, and during my first tournament, I remember like I, I had to do step up my conditioning with him and he was a high school wrestler so he was like plenty in shape already he was kind of my senpai when it comes to to martial arts early on um but he he told me uh, as as we were preparing for for the competition he was like listen um the tournament is not the fight preparing for the tournament is the fight the tournament is the reward right and that attitude kind of stuck with me like the reason i do this is not to win tournaments I enter tournaments in order to, to test my skills, expose my weaknesses, and hopefully demonstrate progress over time, right? So tournaments give me a good canvas uh, to, sh to show my progress, and it gives me a chance to expose myself and see if, you know, what, I, what I need to work on, right? It gives me a chance to focus my practice. Um, but winning tournaments is not the end goal. My end goal is to be a better jiu-jitsu player, and that is validated by, by entering and winning tournaments. But it also... Uh, like losing tournaments contributes to that goal because if I lose, then I have a set of things that I can work on to get better, right? And I think that attitude is kind of, it's the core of the learning mentality, right? It's the core of, of being able to enjoy the stuff for years and years and years, right? Because this, the, the fact is, is that like um, the dedication that you, th that 
dedication and consistency is the biggest thing that you can bring to your fighting at practice, right? Like it doesn't, if you and your buddies are just starting out and one is like a whole lot better for whatever reason, maybe he's just like naturally talented or whatever, you're still like that. Those natural talents aren't, aren't going to matter if you practice for an hour every day and he doesn't, right? So like given a long enough timeline of practicing when someone else isn't practicing, eventually you will get good, right? And so the, the biggest struggle in fighting games is to stick with it. It's to keep, it's the, to have the discipline and consistency to keep playing, you know, like put in that extra hour, right? Or put in that extra day or whatever to get that, you know, watch those extra videos, do work to get better. Um, even when you're getting beaten down over and over and over, because that's how you get better. Um, so with that in mind, I thought I'd, I'd talk briefly about a few things that I do to, to kind of find this, con to, to, to find the satisfaction, right? Because if you think about it, um, oh no, it's not Diego Sanchez. Uh, it's my friend Diego Cuenca. He's a he's a great jiu-jitsu guy. Um, I think he works in finance or something. Plays a lot of video games actually. Um, but fundamentally, so I you know I talked earlier about needing to find satisfaction outside of just the win and the loss, right? So you have to, so basically the way I think about it is if you're not feeling some kind of satisfaction, some kind of reward from playing fighting games, even if you're losing, then you're you're gonna burn out pretty quickly, right? Because like fundamentally. Uh, it's not really our job to, to play video games. Like even, you know, even, except for a very like elite level of pro, like none of us get paid to play video games for the most part, um, certainly not enough to build a career on, right? So this is something we do for fun. And even if fun it takes a little work to get there, you need some kind of fun. You need to feel some kind of reward, right? If you hate the shit and you're just get, you feel like you're getting beaten up all day and there's no reward in it for you, then, um, you, you know, just an emotional reward, then you're not gonna last very long. Right. So the goal is to figure out, OK, like what are the things that would pull you away from fighting games? What are the things that would stop you from practicing and make you care less? Right. Um, and a lot of that is that is that that core sense of dissatisfaction. So you have to find strategies to make make the stuff more satisfying until you get to the point where you're playing the game. You, you feel like you're actually playing the game. Right. Because that's the trick about fighting games is that like there's a whole bunch of learning up front before you even feel like you get to have fun. Right. And then once you're playing the game, that's when learning becomes easier because you have this momentum. Right. You already know what game you're, you already know how the game works. You know how to do your stuff. You have this base that you can build on and it's building on that base is fun. So I think there, there are kind of a, a, a few analogies I can draw or um, kind of comparisons I can draw to martial arts and lifting that I think uh, more people ought to apply as part of developing this learning mentality. And I'm going to be straight up. It sounds like work. Right. Compared to just jumping into a fucking, you know, like a uh, lobby or versus mode or, or, you know, like playing some games with your buddy, this is going to sound like work. But I, I promise you that if, if all you do is just play games against your friends or you play games against online randos, you will churn and burn out of this game faster than if you're doing this stuff. Right. Because this is the stuff that even though it feels like work when you're doing it, you're actually you're actually going to find ways. You actually are going to find some kind of sense of consistency and satisfaction from it that will end up building up your uh, and you'll get better. Right. So the first thing is and I alluded to this a bit earlier, but like when you go to the gym. Right. Or when you're training uh, for like, you know, a goal or anything, whether you're running or doing martial arts or whatever, it helps to have a core group of friends, right? A gym buddies. You want people who are around your level of expertise. They can be slightly higher, slightly lower, whatever, but like you want that consistency against your peers, right? Not only does this give you consistent sparring partners that let you chart your progress, but it also gives you a social reason to play, to, to play these games over and over and over, right? So like when I'm playing Rising Thunder online, I try and, and, and hit up my buddies and just be like, hey, do you guys want to play something, right? Same thing with Excerpt, right? Playing Excerpt online has been a great opportunity to, to hit up friends who like I haven't seen in months and just hang out with them. But it's also consistency. It gives me that opponent, right, that I can test myself against. You know, and if, I, if I'm like playing against Nerd Josh and I get bodied a little bit less than I did six months ago, that's some fucking progress. And that's really cool, right? Um, and, and, and it's tricky because, like, when you're when you're when you're looking for this kind of gym buddy or sparring partner for fighting games, you want to make sure you have a selection of people, if possible, um, at different levels of ability, right? You want to have people who are slightly ab above your your level because they should be able to push you and and kind of expose holes in your game, 
right? And you want someone that's about at about your level because you want to be able to to kind of turn it down a little bit or, or like experiment and get punished, but you also don't want to be like slapped in the face, right? Like you're you know as you play on your own, you're going to develop all kinds of like setups and tech and comms. You're going to be trying stuff out, and you want someone who can blow it up, but you also want someone who it kind of works on. Right, because if you have just the person who gets hit gets hit by your, like if you have a new mixup and you have just one person who gets blown up by that mixup every time, you're gonna think that mixup is godlike, right? And you're gonna do it all the time, but it's probably not that godlike, and you'll find out, and it'll hurt, right? You also want someone who will expose it, right? You want someone who who when you try the mixup on, maybe it works once, and then after that, they, they see through it, and so you have to figure out other stuff, right? And without both those partners, you probably won't have the confidence to go for that mixup and try it out the first couple times, and you also won't have the experience of seeing, seeing it get blown up, right? And those are important, because when you're integrating techniques and setups and combos and whatever into your brain, right? When you, when you put them into the part of your brain that you can just do on autopilot, you wanna be able to develop them as much as possible, and so in order to do that, you need several consistent training partners. If you don't have that, if you don't have that Network of people that you, that you know that you can consistently rely on, even if it's just like one day a week. Hey, dude, it's seven o'clock. Let's hop on, play some games, and then you drink a beer or whatever. Like, it gets much much harder for you to to, to test your progress, right? And what's more, if, you know, as you as you guys start to get better and start leapfrogging each other, that will serve as motivation to keep going, right? This is why like groups of friends that play games are so powerful. Right. So gym buddies absolutely is the number one thing you can do. Right. And the reason why I wanted to give that NeoGAF thread a shout in the beginning is because that's what people are doing in this thread. Right. People from all over the country and all over the world really are trying to find ways to just imp inspire each other to get better because they're having a hard time connecting with people locally. And that's really fucking cool. Right. Um, second thing, and this is this is one of the things that definitely sounds like work, but I actually had a lot of fun doing this was ex execution drills. So. Um, I used to be a Marvel player, um, Marvel 3 I played a lot of, and after about two years, I think, it was like a, after the first Ultimate Marvel 3 tournament at EVO, um, I decided, I was play, I'd been playing Zero since the beginning, but I hadn't learned Lightning Loops, because uh, I just, I was like, you know what, I see that, it's too hard, I can't do it, um, I'm not even going to bother to try, right? And then, and so for two years, I, I, was, I was stopping myself from being really powerful with Zero, because I felt like I couldn't do it, right? It took like 30 minutes of sitting down and actually asking people how it works before I started, before I got like maybe two or three of the lightning, just, just that normal like lightning attack in a row. And it's like, oh, huh, maybe I can do this, right? And then after that, I spent like a year, you know, that next year from Evo to Evo, I spent like about 30 minutes every day, give or take, um, practicing lightning loops. And that is... That is probably the most dedicated I've been to execution since like CVS2, right? And, and practicing like just defending or combo into super, which I'm now terrible at, whatever, right? But, you know, I thought it was going to be a lot more work and a lot more of a pain in the ass than it actually was. When I, you know, and, and at first it felt really tough, right? But eventually, like at, within about a week, it felt good. And it did, that didn't mean I was good at loops. I'm still dropping loops and I still do occasionally now. Um, but like fundamentally, it felt like I was making a progress and, and it didn't matter whether I was winning or losing those games. It felt like I could tell, you know, I, what I do is I try and do it five times on one side and five times on the other side and then became 10 times on one side and 10 on the other side. And that's in a row, right? So if I miss, if I miss a loop, then I have to reset the whole counter, right? Um, and you'd think that got boring, but actually it, it was a lot of fun, right? It, I, it, it's, it got me thinking about like all the different things that I could change in my execution, right? Like it got me to change the way that I do dragon punches. It got me to change the way that I hold my stick and change the way that, that, uh, that I hit buttons. And that was all stuff which like I'd been playing fighting games for years at this point and, hadn't re and I hadn't revisited or reevaluated in a long time. But it also, like, like I said earlier, it gave me that consistent satisfaction, right? And yeah, some days would be worse, but some days would be better. And overall, I could chart my progress and see that I was getting better, right? So that's, that's definitely a thing you can do to level up. And this is something which, like, uh, honestly, like, I didn't enjoy about Street Fighter Four so much was, like, yes, it's an execution-heavy game, but there were fewer things that I felt motivated to practice compared to a Marvel or CVS2, where there's always some, like, just execution challenges that you want, that, that you want to just kind of throw yourself at, right? Um, again, it feels like work at first, but it gets much, much easier 
um, once you pick a few goals and and like slowly see yourself hit them, right? And the goals could be whatever. Like at first it could just be like do dragon punches consistently, and then it could be do reversal dragon punches consistently, and then it could be do a combo or what what you know whatever it is. But but if you actually spend time on your, ex your execution, you don't treat it as a, a chore. You treat it as an exercise. Um, I think you'll have a lot more fun with it, and you'll start to appreciate that side of the game, right? Like there are a lot of people out there who just say, oh man, I like fighting games except for the execution part. No, that's bullshit. The execution part is beautiful. Right? It's a beautiful part of this game. That doesn't mean it's always great. Right? Like There are some games I can think of where the execution uh, barrier is a little bit too high and it makes me not want to play it personally. But like fundamentally, part of the, the amazing thing about this game is that you can fail. Right? So first two things that you can do to find satisfaction in fighting games besides winning and losing is finding gym buddies and developing executional drills. Third thing is study. Right? And again, this is one of those things that sounds like work, but when you approach it with the right mindset, I think it actually gets a lot easier, right? You watch videos, right? Maybe it's of characters that, that you're trying to play and get better at. Maybe it's of matchups that you're having a hard time doing, right? Maybe it's combo videos, whatever, but you watch videos with an eye towards improvement, right? So it's not, ooh, how this how's this match gonna go, right? Maybe you watch it the first time just to find out how it goes, but then you watch it a second time and a third time and try and dissect like, hey, what is the setup? Right? How does it work? How can I copy it? How can I practice it? Right? How can I turn this into the next thing that I study for my executional drills? Um, you can look at what they do in the neutral right? and try and mimic it. What ranges seem important and why? How does, your, how, do, you know, how does the player you're trying to emulate get there? How do other people shut it down? Right? Take notes on that stuff. Even if your notes are wrong, it, 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 like that, that's kind of the beauty of this is that you don't have to be right. You're not expected to be right because uh, you're probably not a great fighting game player yet. But even if your notes are wrong, that gets you thinking about the right things, right? And the, and the fact is, is that like, we don't, compared to other competitive activities, fighting games are not nearly as uh, uh, instruction focused, right? Like we don't have a whole lot of people celebrating themselves as teachers. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't come to my house every day and I teach you fighting games, right? Um, so instead, it's, it's a lot of self-study. You're expected to learn and pick up the stuff on your own or through talking about it, comparing notes with friends. But there isn't this culture of like, uh, you learn, I teach, right? Which means that you kind of have to teach yourself. And part of that is just thinking about it, right? It's not, it, and, and, and you know, what I say when I say it doesn't matter if you're right or not is the fact that you're thinking about this stuff is important. Eventually, you know, as long as you're putting hypotheses and assumptions and ideas out on the board, eventually you'll see some of them get validated, right? Like, oh, that range is really important for this reason after all. Or maybe it'll get, uh, maybe maybe your, your assumptions and hypotheses will be proved false. I guess that range isn't so important. Really what he was doing was more worried about this other thing, right? Um, but either way, you've learned something new about the game, and you learned it, you learned it by thinking about it, right? This is actually one of the, the, the things that I think is really cool about League of Legends, is that actually playing League of Legends, if any of you guys are League players, is a relatively small part of the experience. A lot of the experience is thinking about it, it's thinking about teams, thinking about drills you can do to get better, thinking about, like, ways, you know, like, analytical tools you can develop to understand the game better, reads you can make, that kind of stuff, right? Um, and, and talking about it with other people, like, like deconstructing a game afterwards to see what happened and why. And just, it's like, you know, when, when you're done with a game of league, it feels like there's this intricate puzzle that like happened because of this thing happening in the top lane. And then this thing happening in the bottom lane, combining to like create this effect 20 minutes later, blah, 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 blah. And that's really cool. It's real. It's a lot of fun to kind of walk through that stuff, right? Once you get good at it, once you have the language, right? But in order to start, in, in order to start talking about that, the, about the game at that level, you kind of have to start talking about it, period, right? Um, and this is one way to do that, right? Is to start to start keeping those notes, keep, you know, filing things away, studying, and, he, and whether you're right or wrong, as long as you're keeping the stuff in your brain, eventually you'll try and think of, eventually you'll, you'll land on, on, a, on a system of thinking about these games and, and understanding them and analyzing videos that works for you, right? Um, that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to do with the stream, actually, is uh, eventually get in the habit of analyzing replays and de deconstructing these videos so that we can learn stuff together, right? Not because I think I have all the answers, but I think that if I get something on the board, then you guys can take it and run with it and tell me where I'm wrong and where I'm fucked up and where I'm right and, and you know, I said something that made you think about this other thing that's really cool, right? Um, and this is also something which I learned from, from martial arts and from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in particular because... Uh, and, and for those of you who, who don't really know much about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, basically it's a, it's a ground fighting and grappling art. If you've ever watched the like submissions part in the, uh, you know, of the UFC and the sweeps and, and all the, the wrestling that happens on the ground, 
it's a fighting system for that, right? But it's it's very expressive. There's a lot of different things that you can learn because you're you know you fundamentally your variables that at play are your human body and everything it can do versus their you know your opponent's human body and everything it can do. And so there's a whole lot of different ways of describing the stuff that happens in in a match of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and concepts like weight and balance and pressure and and mind games and so on where you kind of have to like figure it out for yourself, right? Like um, especially for someone like me, like like a good teacher can try and explain a move. They can even try and explain a, con explain a concept, but there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into it before I actually feel like I understand it and can articulate it to someone else. And so this is really good practice for that, right? So three things so far, we've got gym buddies, execution drills, and studying, right? Studying videos. And the fourth is kind of a corollary of the, of, of the third, but if you can record your own matches and go over them. It's super embarrassing and it's tough to see yourself make mistakes, but I promise you, when you look at your own play, you'll get an insight into how you play that you wouldn't get just from watching other people, right? So, like, you can go set up open broadcaster service if you're trying to, to record your, your matches locally, like, on, on your PC, whatever. You can get, like, a capture card or something. Shit, you can, like, rig up a VCR or whatever. Um, it doesn't fucking matter. You can set your smartphone up in a little tripod. It doesn't matter. But you should be recording your own matches and watching them and trying to pick them apart, right? That's a, that's a lot of what the people in that NeoGAF thread are doing is they're, they're, they're submitting their stuff not just for the... Um, like not just for their own review, but for other people's review as well to get feedback and to get tips, right? And that's that's super powerful, right? Because eventually that's the kind of thing you want to be able to do in game. You want to be able to, to diagnose your problems and get that level of like metacognition, right? To be able to look at the decisions you've made while you're making them and think, huh, that's weird. Why am I making these dumb decisions? Why am I getting hit by this anti-air, this wake up DPL or, 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 you know, all that stuff. You need to be able to learn that to learn how to do that in game if you're going to adapt and beat your opponents, right? Um, that's the beauty of fighting games that it teaches you to do this stuff. But bef but if it's it's really hard to get there if you don't practice it. And in order to practice it, you really want to watch your own matches and record them, right? Or sorry, record your own matches, watch them, and then start critiquing them, right? Start picking them apart and think, huh, why did I do this thing? I should I should think about this. I and and hopefully what it does is the next time you're in that situation in an actual match, you can think about a time that you were in a match that you know that you recorded a match just like it and you thought about the stupid things you did and you think, oh, I should definitely watch out for this thing or this other thing, right? I realize the thing pronouns are a little bit vague, but I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So yeah, for, you know, in a nutshell, that's basically the four things that I would offer, right? Like if you're trying, if you, if you find that you're the kind of person who loses motivations, motivation in fighting games, these four things, it's gym buddies, executional drills, watching, you know, watching other people's videos and studying them and then watching your own videos are really like, simple um certainly like kind of kind of tiring like it's it, it, it doesn't sound fun at first right but they're definitely simple things that you can do to have more fun right and and i do treat this stuff as a lot like going to the gym right like there's gonna be some days where you're like man i don't i don't i don't, I don't feel like going to the session or i don't feel like working on execution drills and it's okay sometimes right like you gotta you want to push it off and do whatever but fundamentally i think you need to go into this go you know go into these games with the idea that these are things that you can do to improve and that's really what you're here for is you're here for the improvement right you're here for the improvement it's the satisfaction of beating other people that kind of keeps you in the game and, and gives you the validation of that improvement but fundamentally that's why you're here right is because you, you want to get better at this stuff and you're not going to get better without motivation so you need to find better ways to motivate yourself than just holding on to the wins and losses right because at the end of the day like the wins and losses aren't like you know for the most part no one's going to remember those wins and losses except for you right and even then you're probably only going to remember the really good wins and the really close losses or the really you know the huge blowouts or whatever right but the the stuff that like that you take from the game with you and can apply in your everyday life is stuff like cultivating this work ethic and, and that discipline, right? Learning how to better understand yourself and learning how to better understand other people. Like that's all that's all really powerful shit. And fighting games give you this really cool tool set to do that stuff with, right? But not if you're just playing versus mode, right? Like not if you're if you're just playing matches against other people. Yeah, you can grind out matches, you can have a lot of fun, you can learn a lot. It's important. But it's not the only thing you should be doing. And if it is the only thing that you're doing in a fighting game, I suggest that you're probably not actually taking the 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 kind of the best route for uh, for getting good and also for, for, for really like, like for getting good at the fighting game, but also just get like getting the most value that you can out of these games. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my rant. Um, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I'm gonna cut it pretty short, but, uh, I, this is short for me, I guess. Um, but, uh, 
uh, I, I really appreciate all y'all tuning in. And if you're watching the, you know, the, the YouTube VOD, that's cool too. If you're a new viewer, go ahead and, and, and click the follow button. I try to do this stuff a couple days a week. Also, if you weren't around last uh, or yesterday, I did a really awesome stream. It was like a two hour interview with uh, my friend AVB, who just wrote a game called We Know the Devil and it's super cool. We talked about fighting games and what she gets out of them and also writing and kind of how, how, the, how skill development in fighting games looks a lot like skill development in writing, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, it's, it's on my YouTube at youtube.com slash path the flip. And I'm trying to do weekly interviews with people who have in interesting, th uh, interesting things to say about fighting games, but also about other stuff, right? Like the fighting game community is super diverse and super talented. And I actually find that the people who have the, the, the kind of the coolest takes on fighting games are not the people who are only really, really good at fighting games, but it's the people who engage with fighting games and also other stuff, right? That's kind of the, the approach I take towards the stuff. So Thank you so much for watching. Um, if, you get, if anyone has any questions, I can get to them uh, in, you know, it, it just type stuff in chat and I'll answer it real quick. Um, I'll probably give another like two or three minutes to cool down unless we get some really interesting conversation. But uh, yeah, thanks. Um, so we got, uh, let's see. Vorpal Femme had a comment earlier about um, thinking about different level peers with music and that how, how the, the idea of having better friends or stronger friends and weaker friends has helped you learn new instruments. Man, I, like, I think that's really cool. I'm, I'm personally not a musician, but one of the things that actually made me uh, kind of realize this connection he was here was, uh, I've, there's a friend of mine who loves video games but doesn't play fighting games at all, and he couldn't even throw a fireball. And this was actually at his bachelor party. I learned that he couldn't throw a fireball, and I was like, man, uh, I, I cannot respect you as a person. Well, I was just joking. But, you know, it's like I can't respect you as a man unless you can throw a Hadouken. So uh, I opened up Super Turbo on my laptop, and we had a... Uh we had the session where like he was incompetent until I told him to close his eyes and listen to the sounds that my stick was making as I, you know, as I performed a fireball. And then he got it to with about 80%. I don't, I don't think he could still do it, right? It's not like he's been practicing. But at that moment, I was like, oh, I'm not a musical person, so I don't think about this stuff as, as a musical instrument, right? The closest I've gotten is like playing beat mania and pop music and shit. But I'm realizing now that that's actually kind of a natural parallel, right? My, my parallel was to, uh, to actual fighting, right? And so I kind of grew in martial arts and then grew in Street Fighter and then grew a little bit more, more martial arts and that's really cool. Um, what else we got next? So uh, Alex Sanchez, AKA Mecha MacGyver asks, what advice would you have for people that find themselves raging after losses? And Danny echoes as a real question, how do you deal with your own personal sadness after, after getting your ass whooped for hours straight as someone who hates to lose? Um, so like you kind of have to change the someone who hates to lose thing, right? You have to, and, 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 and that means actually sitting down and thinking about what it means when you lose, right? So like you sit down and you feel like, what kind of things do you feel when you lose, right? I get like, I get salty, right? I'm, I'm, I spend a good chunk of my day playing Rising Thunder online and like, I probably, like, I play a lot, right? Cause, cause it's part of my job and everything. And when I lose to someone who I, I don't recognize, like I get kind of mad. Right. Um, but I have to I have to be able to kind of step outside of that mad. It's OK to feel it. Right. It's OK to feel upset. Right. But what I don't want to do is make that feeling change any of my actions. Right. The way I think about it is like in the moment, if I'm feeling upset, there's not really a whole lot I can do to stop feeling upset. But I can also know I, I, I can take the, 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 the time to think, hmm, I'm feeling upset. This means like maybe this means I should play a little bit more conservatively. Or this means that I should uh, switch it up, try and play a different character, you know, whatever. Uh, this means, you know, and like sometimes like I've gotten bodied by people like, like when I first started playing Guilty Gear, I got bodied by Tragic 30 games in a row, right? Uh, Chip versus Eddie, I'd never played a good Eddie, lost 30 games in a row. Um, and so my goal, like, so I started scale, scaling back my goal. So it wasn't, oh man, I need to win this one. It was, well, maybe I can take a round or maybe I won't lose to an unblockable or maybe I'll hit my, my reversal DP or whatever, right? It has to do with, uh, so, so one thing I do is I set goals for myself that are independent of winning or losing. Did I hit my combo? Awesome. I feel a little bit better about that, but it's tough because you have to, you have to first be able to step back and realize I'm getting pissed off. I should, I need to think of some strategies to to ameliorate the pissed offness, right? To, to reduce that salt a little bit. You need to cut that salt. 
Um, and so stuff like finding other goals within the match besides just winning or losing is one thing you can do, certainly. Um, another is just to like, you know, try and change your game plan, right? Not And just start testing stuff out and see if it works differently, right? Maybe the approach you're taking is wrong. Maybe you're going in when you, should, when you shouldn't be going in. You should be playing a zoning game, right? Like in the moment, just try and think of any alternate strategy and see if it sticks, right? Um, but fundamentally, the, the, you know, you can have the room to, to, to figure out whatever strategies you want. And I think that's actually the easy part for dealing with that salt. But fundamentally, the first thing you have to do is sit there and realize in the moment, man, I'm feeling salty and I need to do something about it. And that, I think that that's the, the most powerful thing you can do, but it takes practice, right? And, and the great thing is that that's something that's applicable outside of fighting games as well, right? Like if you're angry at, at work or you're angry with your, you know, your significant, significant other or whatever, right? You don't want to be dealing with that problem angry. You want to be dealing with your anger first, and then you deal with the fucking problem, right? Because if you're dealing with a problem while angry, you're probably going to do something stupid, and you're probably going to make a fucking mistake, right? I know some people say that, like, they, they play fighting games better when they're mad or upset or angry or whatever. I think it's bullshit, right? I think you need to have a level head. You need to be calm. That doesn't mean you don't need to be motivated, and you need to be feeling it. You want, like, a little, want a little heat, a little hunger, right? Um, because that keeps you sharp and vigilant, but you don't want to go into it angry, or salty or any of that because you're just gonna do stupid shit and all the stuff which you might think is like super cool or like sneaky or whatever when you're angry I guarantee you when you see that shit and uh, and you're not angry and you're kind of lucid and normal it'll get blown up super fast and you just be like man I'm a fucking idiot um, so yeah like Alex said like losing is great like and, and eventually you get into a game where at a certain point like you want to lose because it means you found some someone worthwhile right um, next question from uh, Watakshi721 says, what do you do when your game is dead? That's a good question. Uh, I think one of the sweetest quotes I've ever heard, I don't know who said it, but one of the sweetest quotes I've ever heard in fighting games is like, uh, a game isn't truly dead until uh, the last match is played where no one cares who wins or loses, right? So like, I play CVS2, there ain't a whole lot of CVS2 players out there. Right. But the good thing is most of the people who stop playing CVS2, like they don't really matter anymore. I can still find good people if I if I go out of my way for it. Right. And so like when I go to tournaments now, like I don't practice CVS2 that much. I, you know, I'll, I'll mess around in the setup here and there. It's more, mostly like an excuse to get friends over. And so that's cool. So we play and then I'll go to a tournament like CEO and, I'll, and they'll have a CBS2 set up and that's awesome. And then I'll, I'll hustle Jabaili for $80 in money matches and just take his money so I can take my girlfriend out to a nice sushi dinner, right? Like, yeah, I can't find CBS2 all the time. So I just play it a little bit. But when I do, I have fun. And in the meantime, I play other games and they're not as fun as the game I love, but that's okay, right? Um, so that's that's kind of the way that I deal with it. But other people have been really good about architecting a scene, right? So like, um, so so part of it is like, uh, if you want other people to play your game, then you have to you probably have to teach them, right? So start making videos or streams about your game, right? That's one of the reasons why I'm trying to stream more CBS too, so other people can see what's up, and then when they see an actual setup, they can try it out, right? Um, if you can or like, I guarantee you, I don't know what game you're playing but there are probably people out there who are trying to play it and you just need to find them, right? It's frustrating. And you might find that your game for whatever reason is not like, uh, it, it just, it's, it's not, it's too hard to build a scene, right? Like, it, like I said, this is no one's job. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine named Luis who plays VF and he's just like, he's really sad because it's hard to find VF players in the United States. Um, and it's, you know, like everyone gives shout outs to VF for being a great game, but not many people want to play it. And I, I don't know why that is. Like, I know why I don't like playing VF. It's because VF in every 3D game out there has like, I think a minimum like seven frame startup on most of their moves a lot of the time. I don't like it. I don't like games that don't feel crisp. Even, even Rising Thunder is about as slow as I'm willing to get as far as stuff like, like whiff jabs and whatever, right? So that's personally why I don't like it. And I can appreciate that's a great game, but I, I, I just didn't enjoy it for whatever reason. Um, so yeah, it can be hard to, to build your own scene. If you're really motivated, then give it a shot. But if you're not, like, just take satisfaction in the moments that you can play it, man. Like, I play, I play CBS2 against people maybe, like, once or twice a month if I'm lucky. And I look forward to that. It's great, you know? Um, all right. Any other good questions? What's your favorite fighting game ever? Uh, CBS2. No question. <laughs>
<laughs> I love that game. I'll probably do another. Uh, I, I could I could talk for hours and hours and hours about what I, I love about the game. Um, I think part of it, honestly, is just it's the game that got me into fighting games as like a young adult, and uh, so it kind of set the stage for everything else. But there's just there's so much cool shit in that game. Um, actually, if there's any more questions, get them in chat. Otherwise, I will shut down for the day. Um, but there was one other question I got from my Ask FM that I will just uh, bring up real quick. Um, sorry, CVS2 stands for Capcom versus SNK2. It is the best. Do to do. Where's that Ask FM notification? Capcom versus SNK. Millionaire Fighting 2001. Uh, all right. So the question was from Anonymous. And th this question is, do you think, quote, I don't even know where that mix-up hit mix-ups are good to implement into your game, or should you stick to playing mind games with your opponent? Um, I think if you don't know where the mix-up's going to hit and you're really devoted to, to improving then you should probably know where that mix-up is going to hit. As a zero player, I can confidently tell you that I can't block zero mix-ups. I don't know how, it, like, I just, it's a fucking guess, right? That's, that's the case with a lot of Marvel. Like, and I, the way I kind of think of Marvel is that, like, there's this, there's this really broad second tier of players who are good enough to take a game off of one of the gods, but not good enough to take a set off of one of the gods. Right, like it's easy to get enough power to random someone out in Marvel because so much of that game is random and so, or like random, right? Like it's it's not easy to to read a lot of the shit that's going on on that screen and in what order it happens, right? Like I think of a multi-layer zero mix-up as something like trying to parse a Magic the Gathering like uh, instant and interrupt stack in real time. You just have to know, oh, this thing, this thing, this thing, this is how they interact. Bam! I should be over here. I should be blocking this way. And it's almost impossible for me to, to grok, even after years and years of playing Zero. So, um, fundamentally, I think uh, you're not really... If it's if it's a truly ambiguous 50-50, then you're not really playing a mind game. That doesn't mean you shouldn't use the mix-up. It means you should try and understand it. But it, it kind of depends on the game you're playing. If it's something like Street Fighter 4, I kind of feel like there's no excuse for not knowing where a mix-up is going to hit. Um, but yeah, it's a good question, though. I think it's pretty cool. And again, as a Zero player, I have specific thoughts on this. So I got to wrap up because I am going to be late for dinner. But thanks, everyone, as usual, for watching. I will go ahead and upload these archives onto, um, onto Twitch and YouTube. As always, you can check it out, youtube.com slash pathoflip. If you haven't already followed me, go ahead and give me a follow. I love talking about this kind of stuff. And, like, I want your questions, right? So, like, hit me up on, on Twitter, at pathoflip, or ask.fm slash pathoflip to ask questions, and I'll answer them during chat, during stream times. Like... Like I said, this this exercise and streaming and talking about fighting games is just as much for me and, and my attempts to try and get better and my hope that I can help other people get better too. So thanks a lot. Um, if you appreciate what I'm doing here, just give me a follow. Peace out, y'all. See you later.